This is Hello World HTML5. In this screencast I will create the simplest possible HTML5 page and show you how to test the page in the browser. And I'll show you a couple of other things about how to work with a page that you've created in a text editor um, as well as validating the page as well too because that's pretty important for uh, HTML development. Okay, so as you see here on the screen, I have a text editor window on the left side, and I have uh, Firefox on the right side. I'm going to use Firefox as my testing browser for today, but um, I happen to also be on a Mac. doesn't matter what operating system you're on. Um, you have an operating system, you have some kind of text editor, you have some kind of web browser. Every desktop operating system has these things, so the details of how this stuff works are, for the most part, not really relevant. In most cases, it's going to look almost identical on every system, Windows, Mac, Linux, whatever. And so we'll be able to go through the steps together, and you'll be able to see how to do this. And the details of implementation across different systems should not make a difference at all. Okay, so to get started, the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a document type HTML. And as we cover in this week's notes, the document type definition is going to give the web browser information about not only what kind of data exists in this document, which is HTML, of course, but also what version of the HTML standard that you're using. Um, we're using HTML5 exclusively in this class, um, but you have other options and there are previous versions of HTML, HTML4 and XHTML and so forth that you may run into and there's a ton of that HTML that's out there on the web today. But the reason why we're focusing on HTML5 in addition to the fact that it is much easier is the fact that it is current. It's the, the current working draft and it is usable in um, web browsers today. So that's the version that we're using and we're going to stick with this. Um, one other key thing that you can see that I did in uh, this document is that I typed the document type definition and the close tag at the same time. And this is a tactic that I use to ensure that I don't inadvertently forget to type a close tag. I'll do this again. You can see how this works for uh, the head element of the page. Um, the open and close tag go with each other and if they don't exist, if the close tag doesn't exist for example, then you have obviously a problem. The browser is going to get confused about um, where the element that you had opened is going to close and it will almost certainly mean that your document is not going to be valid. And so um, it's good to get in the habit of opening and closing elements as you type at the same time just so that you don't forget. It's a very common beginner error to forget to close uh, element tags. Okay, so let me uh, type in a title for this page and I'll name it after myself. And you can see I broke my own rule there and I didn't type the close tag for title, but I remember to do it. So as long as it exists, it doesn't matter um, how this works. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and give this, uh, I'll, I'm going to give this a save and I'm going to go to the file menu and select save and I'll call this first.html. You can actually see I cheated and already saved this. So first.html on my desktop so that it's easy for me to get to. And now you can see that we have the minimal possible HTML page. We'll add more content to this in a second, but the first thing I wanted to show you was what a title looks like in Firefox. And you can see it gets displayed in the tab on, um, on OS X on the Mac, but in Windows it gets displayed um, elsewhere. And in IE, I think it gets displayed um, in the window title, which is up here at the top of the browser. But um, I'm going to go over to Firefox now, go to the File menu, select Open File, I'll select first.html and you can see there's nothing in the document because I don't have a body in my HTML. There's nothing to render in the browser window, but there is a title and you can see that the title appears for Firefox, it appears in the tab. For Google Chrome, it also will appear in the tab and I think it also appears in the tab for Safari as well too. In Internet Explorer, I think it, it appears in the menu up, up top here and you can also see that Firefox renders it um, 
in the uh, in the window bar at the top there. So you know that just gives you a little bit of information about what the page is. But there's a more important reason to have titles, and that's for search engines. When a search engine retrieves your page, it looks for the title, um, and if it finds a title, then it will make the title appear in search engine results. So it's a it's not a search engine optimization tactic necessarily, but it's a way to get uh, more information to the search engine about your page, and that's important if you uh, have a public facing website. Okay, so let's add some content to this. I'm going to add an H1 um, header here. And the first thing I'm going to type is hello world. You can see that I have enclosed this hello world in H1 element. And then I'm going to incorporate a paragraph element uh, beneath it. Um, this is the page that I am creating something really simple. No formatting for this at all. We'll worry about that next week. We're just going to worry about document elements and structure and things like that for today. Um, and you should be able to see that um, I have two elements in the page now. Now to test this, um, I'm going to save this again. So it's been saved. And then go over to the browser. And at this point, I don't have to do file load again. I don't have to load the file again. All I have to do is refresh. And you should be able to see the content that I'm creating here. And so this is going to be the cycle that you're going to use as a web developer if you're working in a text editor, um, which you should be. Um, do a little bit of text editing, go to the browser, hit refresh, make sure that it, you've got what you like, go back to your text editor, do a little bit more work in the editor, back to the browser, refresh, test it each time. Each time you make a change to your page, you go back to the browser and refresh to test it to make sure that it's doing what you want. Now again, there's no formatting or anything else on this page. Um, we're not too much worried in this case about what's going on with the font size and the color, positioning, columns, lists, and all that kind of stuff. We're, today we're only really worried about um, getting the elements squared away and getting um, the data for the page in there. But let me show you one other thing having to do with word wrap that I can show you, and this has to do with inline elements. I can paste in some additional text into this paragraph, and all I'm doing is I'm pasting the same sentence in there over and over again. Okay, I can refresh this, and you can see that the page, uh, the words wrap as I resize the browser. Right, so this is called a fluid layout because it changes width according to the size of the browser, and the user gets to determine um, what size of the browser. Um, what, what the line length is depending on what the size of the browser is. Um, we'll revisit this concept uh, in coming weeks when we start talking about CSS because we'll need to think in terms of a fixed layout versus a fluid layout and there's different tactics to be able to do that. But um, there are some inline formatting that we can do at this point and I'll show you the strong element. Strong is an inline element that provides a strong emphasis for the text and is typically rendered in most browsers, almost all browsers will render this as boldface text. So strong indicates that you want to provide strong emphasis. There's also an EM tag that you can use and I'll apply this to a different sentence. Save the document and refresh it in the browser and you can see that there is a conventional emphasis which again in most browsers is rendered as italics, right? You have a lot more control over how um, documents are formatted with respect to typography, color, positioning, width, margin, spacing, and so forth. Um, all of those elements are going to require CSS cascading, cascading style sheets, um, which we'll get into next week.